previously on Left Behind. We're going to find my dad's theory of the disappearance is very interesting. You may think this sounds crazy coming from a technically minded person like me. But I believe I've found the truth and know exactly what happened. The world is ready for Nikolai. If you ask me, Romania, even Europe is too small for him. The UN is too small for him. God cares for each person, but And maybe he's uniquely placed you in the middle of this for his purposes. It's been wonderful spending time with you. I just met you, and I'm, I'm really going to miss you. The pastor I told you about really has a handle on this stuff, the, the Antichrist included. I'll fly to Chicago tomorrow morning. I'll have Marge make a reservation. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to put together this trip. Well, it's a personal thing. Based on the best-selling novel, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 11 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Question, if this Barnes guy, say, pastor, knows so much, why wasn't he taken? And if any of this turns out to be true, then what does that mean for me? Well, nobody's perfect. The Bible makes it clear we're all sinners. We need to be born again. I'm glad you brought that phrase up. I'm guessing a lot of readers will have trouble with it. You know, to them, it's a cliche. Oh, they're not my words. Bruce showed me where Jesus said this to a very religious person. It carries the image of, of starting over, spiritually speaking, in a different family. Family? Yeah, the family of God. Hmm. And as being born into a well-to-do earthly family has benefits, so being born into God's family has benefits. Such as? Well, you know, let me ask you this. If you stood before God right now, what reason would you give for him to accept you? Uh, <laughs> well, this is not a personal piece, Mr. Steele. Humor it's... me. Off the record. Uh, touche. <laughs> well, I've always thought that if my good outweighs my bad, I'd be okay. I mean, I'm not a saint, but compared to a lot of people, yeah, I... I think that's what most people would say. It's what I would have said. But now I understand that none of us are good enough. By birth, we're in the wrong family, just one that's tainted with sin. That's why Jesus came. Yeah, I, ju I just saw a, a, a new verse the other day. It's, um, it's in 2 Corinthians, I think. Something about God made Jesus to be sin for us, so that in him... God made him might become the righteous who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hmm. We're going to be early for the flight. Well, traffic wasn't as bad as I thought. So how did things go with Hattie last night? Oh, let's face it, Chloe. I'm a pilot, not a preacher. Doesn't change the truth of the message, but... Same with the interview. I doubt anything I said will get into the magazine. I don't know about that. Yes, daughter. <laughs> Tell me about the chat you had with our friend Williams. Uh, he is a lot older than you, right? Well, Father, we'll just skip right past your paternal insinuations and tell you that from what Buck told me, you really made him think. Really? Huh. I hope so. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Captain Ray Steele. This is my daughter, Chloe. She'll be flying with me today. Oh, welcome, Captain. Service is still working on the cabin, but your right seat is already on board. Mm. And Chloe, uh, 4D. First class is not quite ready yet. Thanks. Do you mind if I go ahead and get pre-flight started? Okay by me. I'll just uh, grab a magazine. Maybe a Global Weekly. Uh, don't start messing with my head, little girl. I know where you live. <laughs> just keeping you on your toes, Dad. Denied those speculations. Now, Resident Carpathia wants to put these rumors to rest. 
He's not campaigning for the position of Secretary General. He believes in the current leadership of the UN, and he frankly doesn't have the time with all his current obligations. Now, I will say, however, that in the future, if there is a need for a contribution from President Carpathia, there are several conditions which would have to be met before he would ever assume this position. But, as I said, these stories are false and entirely without basis. Welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> well, <laughs> almost had one of those on-the-wing seats, didn't I? <laughs> you cut it a little close, but it's not a problem. <laughs> Seat 4C, right over there. Uh, great, she's here. Meeting 4D? Well, kind of. So, are you the captain's son-in-law? What? <laughs> no, no. Just a friend. <laughs> but I really want to surprise her. Well, looks like she's pretty focused on the window right now. Uh, you should be able to slip in. Thanks. Here it goes. Enjoy your flight. Excuse me, miss? Uh, mind if I put my computer bag here? That's fine. Go ahead. Nice day to fly, huh? Yeah. So, do you feel like a cookie? I'm sorry. I... Buck? <laughs> Buck? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> what are you... What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> Buck! <laughs> nice to see you, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. Great. I'm gushing. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's just... Have you ever received a direct answer to prayer? Uh, well, I thought your dad was the praying member of the family. He is, but I just tried out my first one in years, and, um, God answered it. You prayed I would sit next to you? I never dreamed anything that impossible. <laughs> How'd you do it? Uh, well, you told me your flight time yesterday. I made a few calls, pulled a few strings, and here I am. This is the nicest thing anyone's done for me in a very long time. <laughs> well, uh, Chloe... To be honest, I, I didn't do it only for you. I've got business in Chicago. <laughs> I wasn't talking about you. No, this is sweet. I, I was talking about God. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I knew that. <laughs> I was pretty upset last night at dinner. I noticed. My dad's story moved me so much. I mean, I've heard it before, but all of a sudden, he seemed so loving and so interested in people. No question about that. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought he was trying to convince you personally, rather than just answering your questions. Oh. To tell you the truth, he was getting to me. He was getting to me, too. <laughs> and I don't mean my dad. You know, this is bizarre. I mean, I was up half the night thinking about this. Buck, other than the Bible, there's no logical explanation for the disappearances and those two guys in Jerusalem, is there? Honestly? None come to mind. It's true. It's all true, Buck. <laughs> you know that, right? I'm beginning to see that, yes. When I got on this plane, I started wondering if God answers your prayers before you're a, you know... A born-again Christian? Exactly. I prayed, and I think God answered. And I was the answer. You were. Hmm. I, I still don't understand. I just prayed really sincerely and said I would appreciate it if God could show me personally that he cared. And that he wanted me to know that he was there. And I was the answer to that prayer. <laughs> I can't believe you're here. I wasn't even sure I'd see you again, ever. But it's as if God knew better. There was no one I would rather see today than you. Oh, Chloe. <laughs> the way I see it, I think God's called your bluff. Sounds like you're obligated. Yeah, well, <laughs> from what I've gathered, you don't have to be in a church to do this. Do you want to join me? Uh, well, please don't take this personally, but I don't think I'm ready. Yet. What more do you need? Well, I don't... Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Rayford Steele, take two. <laughs> if you're not ready, you're not ready. I really want to talk to this Barnes guy first. That sounds like a good idea. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Excuse me. Yes? Can I give you a message for my dad? Sure. The captain, right? Right. Tell him his daughter has extremely good news for him. Extremely good news. I'll tell him. Well, uh, 
Bach. Didn't expect to find you back here. Uh, nice to see you again, Captain. This must be the surprise you were talking about. <laughs> I really don't think so. Uh, ah, here you go. I'm gonna move back a few aisles so you two can talk. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> well, what is this good news, honey? Daddy, I've come to a decision. Yesterday at dinner, for the first time, I really saw how much you cared. And then last night, I couldn't get to sleep. It's, it's okay. And I know it's true. I believe, Daddy. I want to pray like Bruce said. <laughs> Chloe. Oh, I'm so grateful. Thank you, God. Is this off the record? I mean, I don't usually talk about this kind of thing around the office. You're safe. And nothing you say is going to be heard by anybody else or used against you in any way. Well, Lucinda was religious. You know that. And, and if there's a heaven, I think that's where she is. Well, your theory is not as unpopular as you might think. Really? Other people have said that, too? Yeah. Thanks for your honesty. Buck, I think you ought to see this. Today, became Secretary General here just moments ago. As late as this morning, Press Secretary Steve Plank made a statement seemingly putting to rest. And now, as you can see, the outgoing Secretary General is about to make a statement. This is Mwangati Nguma of Botswana. Ladies and gentlemen, I have long been aware that the divided loyalties between my country and the United Nations have made me less effective in each role. I have been put into a position to choose, and I am first and foremost a Botswanian. We have the opportunity now to become prosperous due to the generosity of our friends in Israel. The time is right. The new man is more than right and I will cooperate with him to the fullest. Would you sure have stepped down had Mr. Carpathia declined the position? Yes, I would have. Perhaps not today, and not with as much confidence in the future of the United Nations. Putting this story into perspective, not only is there a new Secretary General, but in a matter of hours, every request Carpathia outlined was moved as official business, voted upon and ratified by the body. Among those stipulations, within a year, the United Nations headquarters will move to New Babylon. The makeup of the Security Council will change to 10 permanent members within the month. Carpathia will introduce several of his personal choices. Uh, all right, let's go live inside the UN for some words from the new head of the United Nations, Nikolai Carpathia. I have every confidence in what the ambassadors have expressed today, that we will reach this goal of the destruction of nuclear weaponry together. I look forward to This is the to first time in years I felt UN optimistic decision. about society. Well, maybe we're finally getting somebody who can leave. Hey, 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 hey come on. York, what happened to good old American journalistic cynicism? Quickly. We all world hypnotized here? Someday, somewhere down the line, we might see world peace. No more weapons or wars or squabbles over religion. Maybe in our lifetime. Newsroom. Hey, Buck, it's for you. Steve Plank. Yeah, all right, thanks. Well, I'll take it in here. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey, kiddo. You been watching what's going on? Yeah, who hasn't? Goosebumps, huh, kid? Yeah, mind-boggling. Listen, Carpathia wants you here for the big press conference. Me? Well, what for? He's king of the world right now. What's he want with me? He likes you. Don't knock it. And here's the kicker. Before the press conference, he's had me put together a little powwow with his ten Security Council delegates. And I get a front-row seat? Bingo. <laughs> you care to take a stab at the guest list? A uh, figure of speech, right, Steve? Well, you relax. Come on. Carpathia likes you. Uh, fine. Stonigal? One for one. <laughs> Todd Catherine? You bat an even thousand. Yeah. You really should be here, Buck. Buck, can I tell the boss you'll make it? Uh, I guess you better. Well, how many other press in the meeting? <laughs> you ready for this? You are it. You're kidding. I'm serious. He likes you, Buck. What's the catch? No catch. He didn't ask for a thing. The media will get history post-fact at the press conference. You, you're going to get history as it happens. Obviously, I can't pass this up. Hey, what's the matter, kid? We're talking about the world, the way we've always wanted it to be. Yeah, well, Steve, I hope you're right. I am right, bucko, you'll see. Oh, 
there is a little favor, something you can do. <laughs> All right, here it comes. Hey, Buck, this isn't a deal buster. If you can't do it, you can't do it. That's it. But uh, Nikolai wants to see that friend of yours again. Friend? What friend? The girl, the airline stewardess, or whatever you call him. He wants to see Hattie? Yeah, yeah, that's her. Uh, bring her with you if you can, huh? Well, why can't he ask her himself? Hey, come on, Buck. Lonely guy in a position like this. He can't be out hustling updates now. You introduced him, remember? He trusts you. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see what I can do. No promises. I told Chloe the first thing we need to do is get her her own Bible. We've been time sharing. I'll be glad to. And I'm thrilled to welcome you into the family. I want to join the core group, if, if I can. I mean, I really want to understand more of what I'm reading. The only part that bothers me is that it sounds like things are going to get worse. Well, I'm afraid you're right. God's people are in for some dark days. Everybody is. Like what? Well, it's clear from Scripture that Christ will return at the end of seven years, but it's also clear that most believers, well, they'll, they'll be martyred or, or die from war, famine, plagues, earthquakes. <laughs> Boy, maybe I should have read the fine print more carefully. <laughs> You're going to have trouble convincing people to join the cause with that in your brochure. Yeah, but you know the alternative is worse. Everyone else is in danger of death, too. The major difference is, one, we have hope. And two? Well, we have one more way to die than they do. As martyrs. Right. For something we believe in. You know, I've also been praying about sort of an inner circle of people who want to who wanna do more than just survive. What are you getting at? Going on the offensive? Something like that. It's one thing to hide in here, studying, figuring out what's going to happen next, but doesn't part of you want to just jump into the battle? A cause? Yes! A group, a, a force. That's it, a, a force. What do you call this period? The tribulation. So this team, a sort of biblical Green Berets, would be your tribulation force? Tribulation? Force. I like it. Now, make no mistake, it, it won't be fun. It'll be the most dangerous cause a person could ever join. When it becomes obvious who the Antichrist is, we'll have to oppose him, speak out against him. Christians content to hide in basements with their Bibles might escape everything but earthquakes and wars, but we'll be vulnerable. We'll refuse the mark of the beast, and we'll be targets. Now, to use Chloe's analogy with that on our brochure, do you still want to be part of the tribulation force? Bruce, I can't think of anything I'd rather do. Chloe? I wouldn't miss it. No, this, this feels really, really strange to me. I came to Chicago for work and, well, quite frankly, because I'd get a chance to see Chloe again. Mm -hmm. But I can't help feeling, well, I covered the story of Israel's victory over Russia last year. It was the same feeling. This is not just a story anymore. It's creeping into my life. I can see God is trying to get your attention. Well... He's done a good job of it. Let me be straight with you. I know your work and I respect your talent, but I have answers for people who are genuinely seeking. I've quit apologizing for what I'm going to say. If that's, if that's a ground rule you can live with, I have all the time you need. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know how long I'll need. Not that long ago, I would never have set foot in a place like this, but I was impressed with Ray Steele. His conviction is undeniable. Hence, I'm listening. Well, I was raised in a Christian home. I went to Bible school, married a Christian, became a pastor. I knew the story of Christ. Father, I pray for Buck right now, wherever he is, whatever he's doing, that you would somehow draw him to you. Please take away the blindness or whatever it is that's keeping him from fully trusting you. And God, I, I pray you'd break through his heart. But just show him the way to your peace. 
and we even pray that you'll use him to bring many to know you. Your story and all this prophecy sounds more plausible than ever, but it's just not me to jump into something. Well, nobody can force you into this, but at the same time, no one can tell you how much pondering time we have. Hmm. You sound like Chloe. And she sounds like her father. And he, I've observed, sounds like you. Huh? Family resemblance? Family. Uh, Bruce, I can see why you all consider this so urgent. But like I say... You're a bright guy, so you might as well have all the information you need before you leave here. I don't have to be back in New York until Monday morning. I'll take as much time as you'll give me. I have no family responsibilities anymore. I have a core group meeting and a church service. Uh, you're welcome to attend, by the way. But outside of that, I can go to midnight if you can. <laughs> I'm all yours. I am very pleased with your performance before the press today. Well, thank you, sir. It was an incredible day. Have you confirmed the Security Council meeting for Monday? Oh, yes, yes. All members have confirmed. Uh, I Good. talked with Buck today. He'll be here as you requested. And, and the flight attendant, Hattie. Well, uh, we're still working on that, but, but I think she'll be there. Ah, good. Good. Steve, what I'm about to say is of great importance. This should be your highest priority for the meeting. I'm listening, sir. The room we meet in must be isolated. Hmm? No one should be able to view our gathering. Well, I've already taken care of that, sir. Good. Good. Also, make sure there are no recording devices, no cameras. I want complete secrecy for the sake of our guests and the issues we discuss. Right, but I'm not sure I understand. If, hmm? if we have Buck there, he'll want to record or at least take notes. I am not concerned about Mr. Williams. I do not believe he will be a problem. All right, I'll, I'll make sure... And one that... more thing. Please, seat Mr. Stonegall and Mr. Todd Cothran on either side of me at the table. With you in the middle. You got it. Good. Importance producing perks for them, huh, sir? Yes. Yes, they are quite important, as you will see. This prophecy about the Antichrist. You must have seen the news this afternoon, right? I mean, that's what you're basing this on. Buck, I've been in meetings since noon. I, I haven't seen television all day. Really? Care to uh, fill me in? <laughs> well, Nikolai Carpathia has announced a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. No. Oh. And he's prepared to help the Jews rebuild their temple. Buck, don't you see? What, what more do you need? The words of Scripture are coming true today. But I really believed this guy. Uh, well, why not? Most of us did. But the Antichrist is a deceiver. He has the power to control men's minds. He can make people see lies as truth. Interestingly enough, I have an invitation to attend a private UN meeting Monday. With Carpathia? Yes. You must not go. Well, I have to. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. I have to warn you about what happens next. The Antichrist will solidify his power with a, with a show of strength. He undoubtedly has ulterior motives for wanting you there. Oh, well, what good am I to the Antichrist? If he controls you, you'll be invaluable. But he doesn't. If he is the evil one the Bible speaks of, there is little he does not have the power to do. I warn you not to go there without protection. A bodyguard? Buck, stop thinking in the physical realm. If Carpathia is the Antichrist, do you want to face him without God? I see what you mean. Now, wait a minute, so what is he going to do, hypnotize me or something? Buck, you have to do what you have to do. But I plead with you to think this through. If you go into that meeting without God in your life, you will be in mortal and spiritual danger. Left Behind, the dramatic audio edition, is based on the book by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick. Directed and produced by Todd Bastide. The dramatic audio edition of Left Behind is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.